Here we are with our ninth Let's Play of Mask of the Betrayer, uh, ninth episode of the Let's Play, and we're gonna go and have some banter with Gan, because banter is what Gan does. Ah, more jailers come to rattle my cage. Here I was, settling into a relaxing dream. Now you've gone and spoiled it. There are actually quite a few options as far as how you can gain influence with Gan as part of this conversation. Uh, some of them require uh, skills I don't have, so I'm not going to be able to do it. I do have Spellcraft, and we can ask around the, about the wards around his prison. Oh, those? I hadn't noticed. Did some child come by with a handful of chalk and scrawl them there? And, uh, you can mention that someone altered them afterwards. I had not noticed that. Curious. I had thought they were intended as reversals of binding wards, but you are correct. Hmm. A mystery indeed. Who do you suspect of altering them? Not me, I hope. I have an alibi. And you can compliment him, or you can insult him. And the way Gan works is generally it's better to insult him. So... We can say they were altered by an expert, so it can't possibly have been you. Well, I suppose I should be gratified by the exoneration. One less crime I am guilty of, and a judgment so caustically delivered, too. You may actually be worth speaking to for a time. But I have forgotten what precisely it is that you want. I am not a reader of minds, you know. So out with it. And yeah, let's ask uh, about his crime. My crime? It is a serious one. You see, I am too handsome to look upon. It would not be the first time I have had to place myself behind bars to keep admirers at bay. If that's why you're here, you'll have to wait in line like the rest, I'm afraid. And, uh, we'll restrain ourselves. Good. I would not want you to embarrass yourself. I may be a criminal, but I demand that visitors observe a certain decorum in my presence. Otherwise, chaos ensues. But come now. This banter is delightful, but something must have brought you here other than the chance to converse with me. And, well, we can ask about recruits to protect Balsantir. Seeking soldiers, are you? You have come to the wrong cell. I am neither foolhardy nor desperate enough to fight barbarians or Thaeans. Go find a poorhouse and scatter a few coppers. That might yield better results. And you can ask if you'd rather be caged. No one cages me against my will. I am sheltering myself here by choice, stranger. That braying legion at the gates will be hard-pressed to reach here. The runes my matronly warden scrawled around this cell shall protect me somewhat. But while she possesses some skill with enchantments against the spirit, there were a number of wards on my cell I had to fix myself. Good eyes, a steady hand, and a pleasant disposition are three things she lacks. And once again, insulting him is the, the way to gain influence, and you can say you can, you can forgive her considering the lack of common sense, bravery, and decency the prisoner has. <laughs> oh, excellent. Spur me on with more flattery. I say, if there was a commander I would follow into battle, why not you, with such inspiring, brave words? So, entertain me, brave one. Why would one such as I follow you into such a hopeless battle? And there are a lot of options here. Again, some of them will actually lead you to lose influence. Since I don't have any of these um, skills like intimidate or taunt or bluff or diplomacy, it's not going to work uh, that well. And uh, so I'll just use my innate charisma. Careful, or they'll throw you in here for being charming and well-spoken too. Even if you aren't quite as beautiful as I am. I admit, both your presence and your request intrigue me. Slightly. But that's a slight more than most. And we can take that as a slight compliment. <laughs> An excellent rebuttal. I think this bodes well for our travels. Very well. You have a willing soldier at your side. Shall we be off? And please, let us visit the Witch Warden on the way out, so I can pay my respects to her gentle, loving soul. Anyway, yes. Gan, if you're going to use him, I'm sort of going to use him, uh, is a, a real spirit shaman. And as I mentioned, spirit shaman's a pretty bad class. It's essentially a druid with less armor and weapon options. Uh, Gan does start with 
a bunch of really useless feats, like, well, pretty much all of his feats are useless, but he does have weapon proficiency exotic, which is useful from a standpoint of he um, can use bastard swords, and you can enchant something for him if necessary, and you can make him into kind of a passable front row fighter, never good, but you can make him work. Most of his spells are not of major use, uh, even if you are using him. Some aren't bad. Um, I'm just going to cripple him, of course, because that's what I'm doing with all my characters. The uh, One of the things that, that's sort of worth noting about Gan um, is that he has a bunch of natural abilities, like natural armor and spell resistance. And uh, his stats aren't great, but they're not bad. Ironically, for all his you know witty banter and all that, he just has a charisma of 14, so I don't know what the, what was up with that. Now that we've recruited him, I'm going to start having some conversations, but first I'm going to off-screen just strip him of useful equipment and be right back. Unfortunately, Gan, as a member of the Legion of the Useless, uh, also has a zero strength, so I'm going to have to find a plus strength item so that he can walk around, he can carry the item that's crippling him while he walks around. It's sort of annoying, but it's the way it is. He had some useful rings and some bracers that I'm wearing just because I don't, don't have any bracers otherwise. The rest of his stuff is just garbage I'm going to sell. It's worth noting that if you're actually using him, he has this belt of agility plus four, which gives freedom of movement, as well as a ring of power, which gives freedom of movement. Since freedom of movement is useful, if you're actually using all the characters, you may want to spread those two items around uh, so that you know, people are immune to slow and all that sort of stuff. I'm going to have some conversations with my party members because, well, we're here. To have a part conversation with a party member, you can't just click on them. You have to right-click and then say, uh, talk to. Yes, what do you want? The spirits are restless. There's a legion waiting outside the gates, led by old King Bear. He's awake and not pleased about it. What did you take from him anyway? I've never seen or heard such an uproar. I'm surprised the land isn't tearing itself apart. And we could say we took nothing from him. Well, whatever angered him, I hope something can calm him down again. If his rage grows any more, then Mulsantir will be drowning in blood. And we can ask Gan about how to beat him. Well, our chances are not the best. In that, you can be assured I am speaking true. Still, we have one advantage. Oku's army. The Bear God came here with an army. Why? That army sustains his rage and his strength. They are like a drumbeat for his heart. Defeat them, then focus your attention on Oku, and you may very well survive the day. But I'm not making any promises, mind you. And we ask when he, how we know he's weak enough. I will do what I can to let you know. Listen for my voice over the din of battle. Until you hear me call out, I would not attack Oku directly. Instead, do whatever you can to slow him down and keep him at arm's paws length. And, well, you know, what if Gan falls? Then use your best judgment. But if you've allowed me to fall, then clearly that is lacking. Yeah, a little bit of Vander. Uh, let's just ask him some other stuff. Of course. Ask what you will, and I will do my best to answer. Now, the tell me a little about yourself I'm going to come back to later. I, I'm hopefully going to have enough diplomacy with a bonus item and a couple things I'll find later. But for now, I'm just going to ask him about his parents. Oh, I can indeed tell you about a little. For a little is all I knew of them. A human for a father, yes. A hag for a mother, yes. But who they were, that is not known to me. And, you know... If you were a nice person, you would you would say you were sorry, but Gan's not a nice person, so you say, good riddance. And that is exactly my feeling in the matter as well. If they cast me away, so shall I do the same. And that's it for Gan for now. To finish out this episode of Lots of Talking, let's talk to Sophia, too. I didn't think the spirits would actually pursue us out of the barrow. The bear spirit is as stubborn as he is colorful. And we are going to ask if she's going to go home. Why? I promised to find you some answers. I can't leave yet. You know, there's some problem with her mother, but meh, maybe. Yes, I fear the worst for the Academy. And my mother. 
To be honest, I... I've been half tempted to make my way back home, but... If my mother is... dead, then I'll be carrying out her last wishes. As long as you wish my aid, you have it. And you can be appreciative for some influence. Thank you. My mother would not have requested I look after you were it not important to her. Then it's settled. Now, we should deal with that spirit army. And, uh... Let's what would talk you like about to know? something else. Um, and what would you like to know? get a little know more about Sophia. And, you know, there's a whole thing about her voices and this sort of you know, do we have a crazy person in our party? Well, maybe we have multiple crazy people. For as long as I can remember, I've heard whispers, words, shouts, and mutterings. Sometimes at a deafening pitch, sometimes so quiet I barely notice. But it's clear that I'm the only person hearing them. For a very, very long time, I... I thought the voices were a sign that my mind was peculiar at best, and fatally unhinged at worst. And before you ask, no. The voices have never taken control of me or forced me into action. Well, that's good. She's only half crazy. You know, Gan is a hag spawn, so he's half hag. Um, we have another character who's coming up who's going to be a half celestial. Um, you know, it's it's the party of fractions. And we can thank her for telling us about the voices. Oh. Well, usually people associate voices in one's head with raving lunacy. In other words, you're welcome. Oh, we still think you're crazy. That's it for now. Uh, notably, you can, once you've finished the, the events at the Shadow Theater, you can dismiss characters from your party. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep everybody around for now just because they can't have conversations if they're not there. You'll notice that my influence with Sophia is now up to 88, which is most of where it needs to be. Um, I will probably actually be leaving her at home uh, quite a bit just because, I, you know, if there's no more influence to be gained with her, there's not any more conversation, really. I mean, there, there are a couple things she'll, she'd talk about, but nothing real important. I'll leave the video at the end here.